Hey, welcome back to our conclusion to our study called The Death of Abraham. So I want to go back to Charles Spurgeon, love Spurgeon. Um, let me read you a quote that I found from him. He says that there is an essential difference between the death of the godly and the death of the ungodly. Death comes to the ungodly man as a penal infliction, but to the righteous as a summons to the Father's palace. To the sinner, death is an execution. To the saint, death is casting aside of sins and infirmities. Death to the wicked is the king of terrors. Death to the saints is the end of terrors and the commencement of eternal glory. That's awesome. I love that comparison that he does there to show like just, just how huge difference it is. I've seen, I've been at the bedside of, of people who have died. I've seen that difference with my own eyes in, in families, in the person who's actually dying themselves. I've seen that. <clears throat> there is a complete difference uh, oftentimes. But those who truly have faith in Christ, their death is like a casting off of something that's a weight that's been holding them back all these years. Especially those who have been suffering in sickness uh, for many, many years. It's just like pff, throwing that crack, <laughs> throwing that garbage off. Now I'm getting I'm free. Uh, but for those who die without faith, it, it's it's fear, it's anger, it's confusion, it's lostness. Uh, the family are destroyed. We're on the other side. Those who die in faith, the family is uplifted. Like, wow, yes, they made it. <laughs> so there's a big difference there. Uh, J.R. Miller, I've quoted him from before. He, he reminds of the truths that Abraham had to learn. God thoughts are long. He plans for long periods, he says, for, for generations and ages future. Because a promise has not an immediate fulfillment, we are not to conclude that it has failed. Some of God's wheat grains are long in coming to harvest. The same is often true of the divine promises. They are long in being kept. There must be a time of preparation before our fulfillment can come. We do not know what we must suffer and endure, but the spiritual beauty of which we dream when we consecrate ourselves to God can be realized in us. We are only part two of a great company of believers who are to work in the bringing in of the kingdom. Our portion may be small, only a, a tear or two, only a, a word spoken from the master, only a short day of service, and then death. It would take generations, the Lord told Abraham, to make ready for the occup occupancy of the promised land. It would take generations. Let us learn to believe and to wait. We do not live for ourselves, nor for our own age alone. We live for those who will come after us, even generations hence. We may be only foundation layers. We may never see the superstructure rising. But no matter, if we can make a good beginning, which after we are gone shall grow to nobleness, we will not honor, will, will not the honor of the work be ours? Indeed, those whom the world honors most highly today are the men who themselves did not see completed the great things they began. This is true of Abraham, of Moses, of John the Baptist, of Luther, of Calvin. They wrought in faith, receiving not the promise themselves, but only laying foundations for after generations to build upon, sowing seed for future harvests. So, the question is, we as a people, we as churches, we as followers of God today, what are we building? What are, are we thinking about generations later? Or are we just thinking, well, it looks like the end of the world is coming because look how messed up our society is. So I'm just going to, you know, just say, well, it doesn't really matter. All my stuff's going all my stuff's gone. All, everything that I do is not really going to amount to anything. Everything's going to be gone. Maybe man, Christ, it looks like Christ's going to come back in our generation. So it doesn't really make any sense to build, build for future generations. The problem with that thinking is if you're wrong, you have not done what God commanded you to do. Because if you think that way, 
Christ said to lay up your treasures where? In heaven. If you're just storing up stuff here and saying, well, you know, it's all going to get burned up anyway. It's all going to get destroyed. Christ is probably coming back anyway. So all the stuff that I do doesn't really matter. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But that, that's not the teaching of Scripture. Even though, you know, it says to be prepared, which means you're working up until the time that Christ returns. And what is the job that we're supposed to be doing? Yeah, it's not laying up, you know, my job is not to build up as much wealth as I possibly can and then pass that on to future generations. My job is to care for my family, but it's not to create an empire here on earth. My job is to store up treasures in heaven. How do things get to heaven? Who gets to heaven? Right? It's, it's who? It's people. So where we should be storing up our treasures is through people. We share the faith. We, we do things here that is going to carry on past ourselves. You know, we need to be thinking about future generations because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So what am I doing right now to help the next generation? How am I building into the next generation? Because that's all that really matters. How am I building into the ones that are coming up after me? How am I serving those believers that will come after me? Are we building things? Are we creating things now that they can carry on, that they will strengthen and grow? And, you know, are we laying foundations for future generations? Or are we just thinking about ourselves and hoping that Jesus comes back? You know, that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the story of the ten virgins. Those are the virgins that didn't feel, didn't have their, their oil lamps trimmed, right? These are people that are just like, eh, he's coming back sometime, so it's probably soon. So I'm not going to bother. And the other one's like, you know, we need to keep these things going. We need to be the ones to keep things going. We need to think about future generations. Not just thinking about ourselves and hoping that Jesus comes back. Now, there's always the hope that Jesus comes back and all those things that we're planning for the future don't happen. That's, that's fine. That's his prerogative. But we don't know if he's coming back tomorrow, you know, or a thousand years from now. And if I'm pretending to think that I know, <laughs> and I'm basing my life on the thing, like, well, it looks like this society is falling apart. I agree. Our society in America is falling apart. There's other parts of the world where Christ is flourishing in his, in the faith is growing. And, uh, and you don't know what the Holy Spirit will do. We don't know. You know, we've seen that in, in our own country before. Study the, the, the Great Revival. Um, man, you know, those people during that time were like, man, this, this country's falling apart. People are turning away from God. It's all about sin and evil. And people are turning left and right away from the Lord. No one knows God. They, they're just giving them lip service that they're following. If they're going to church, it's just because it's a you know, society thing. That's where we're at in the, in, in the Great Awakening. But um, then God turned people around, and it was the Holy Spirit. He's like, boom, I'm just going to pour it out. Boom, here you go. Tons of people realizing that they're sinners coming to Christ. Can he do that again? Sure. Can it get really dark and then turn the light on? Sure. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what he's doing. And maybe he won't come back for another 2,000 years. We don't know. We don't know. So we need to live in that that sense not to get pessimistic because it's easy to be like oh look at all this evil he's, he's got to be coming back because this place is a trash hole and then not do anything and not plan for the future and not plan for future generations helping future generations building things now that future generations will be able to carry on and passing the torch you know intentionally passing the torch on and saying like here's what we did here's our plans for the future we want you to take these plans build on these plans and move forward for the for the kingdom of god here's where we're trying to advance here's where we need you to step in and take over because we're at the end of our lives but here's the plans we actually thought about the future we actually thought about how the, how uh you know the faith could advance in this area you know so specific churches what are we doing you know we're looking at our community say well it's, it's done might as well check out. Time to go. <laughs> well, it's Christ coming back anyway, so they're not believers. Too bad for them. That's horrible. You can't think that way. You think, okay, I might not see any fruit from the labor that I do right now. I might, our church might get smaller. We might be, we might, uh, you know, 
lose all of our assets. We might just be a, a small group of people that are faithful to God and to each other. <clears throat> That's all we might be left with. But we're still thinking about the future. Where can this group of people go? What about our kids? What about the next generation? What can they do? And so we need to start thinking that way. That's how Abraham was thinking. You know, that's how God made him think. So we need to think about that. And, uh, and remember, it's God's grace. It's His free grace. So we don't want to put a limit on that either. Like, well, God can't use me. I'm such a lowly person. Well, yeah, that's true of Abraham. That was true of Isaac. That was true of Jacob. They're all losers. <laughs> but God chose them. And then he did some amazing stuff with these people. He do that same thing for you. So you can't be pessimistic. So hopefully that encourages you. Think about Abraham, what he did. But think about the future generations to come after you. Are you building something, leaving something behind that they can pick up and carry on for God's glory and for his glory alone? Think about that and, um, and work on that. Work on that.